the next and the final ses session has a rather concrete goal. Uh, that's to say to make, not to look backwards, but to look forward what is the future of the, the movements. And there are a series of uh, activities, quite impressive if we uh, know, uh, contemplate them. Uh, the first, uh, I would ask uh, Christina Kark from the uh, No to NATO movement to tell what's what's going on now, also in the in in the term we are the, discussing about uh, uh, about mobilization towards uh, Ukraine uh, or against Ukraine war. Um, uh, what is happening now in this field and uh, what are you prepared to do in the No to NATO campaign? Christina? I, she was just... So, sorry, sorry. Ah. If you can see, my health is not the best. And this also affects my handling with my computer. Okay. I couldn't use the mouse as usual and I didn't find it. I didn't find the mic. So please excuse uh, I try my best and will tell you about the network and our campaign. The network was founded in the autumn of 2008 to act against the 60-year NATO summit in Strasbourg. I think some of you have been also participating in this event with the counter summit, demonstration, peace camp, and not only peaceful demonstrations. And since that, we are acting against this NATO summit and working for delegitimization of NATO and get rid of NATO because NATO is a war machine and it's top. Yeah, well, yeah, that it's militarism poor and NATO produced uh, wars and failed states as a result of these wars and we have to stop this and have to overcome the uh, war logic in general to really come to peaceful and social uh, justice uh, world and, and also environmental <laughs> because the militaries not only act against human, it also act against the environment and destroys us. And for the 75th anniversary, which uh, NATO celebrates in 2024, uh, Biden has invited to NATO summit to in June to uh, Washington DC. And of course, we are also preparing our counter actions and uh, together with uh, local initiatives and of course with our network, no to war, no to uh, NATO. We had in 24th of uh, September uh, first action conference of the network together with World Beyond War and other supporters of the activities where we decided a uh, rough uh, plan. There is a new website uh, piece. I will put it in this in the chat later. Uh, yes, peace uh, NATO no org to also can find it on the no minus two minus nato dot org website where you can see what we have planned there is a counter summit planned and i think seven and eight of june and we plan a, a demonstration together with a lot of uh, local organizations u.s american organizations 
and uh, there is a peak march coming from, I think, from the east coast to the west coast. He will, will arrive at the counter summit uh, in our time. They have uh, musicians are now activated and try to make a concert and also will include it to street actions, the music. This is in the planning uh, to, on, on this. And um, Massachusetts uh, peace action also have a webinar series up to this uh, summit to uh, inform about NATO because our aim is to get rid of NATO. We don't need it any longer. And also the No to NATO network plans uh, some webinars for the summit in the um, summit will take place to inform more people because we make the experience there is NATO is not really well known in our countries, even in Europe. A lot of people thinking, oh, NATO is good and no, NATO is for defense us. And with a new uh, escalating hate to Russia, it's uh, awful. They all seem to love NATO and want to have it and don't want to act against it. The next uh, international, no, the next meeting mostly for the US is on 9th, 9th of uh, October to see how they can go on with local preparations. And also, I think in the mid of um, October, we will have the next Zoom call from the No to NATO network to see what we can do, especially uh, from Europe to go to um, to go to Washington and we also discuss to have a week of actions worldwide uh, across the summit. Maybe it can uh, start with a 24-hour peace wave which will take place. The date is not uh, fixed actually. And then actions in every country who is uh, against NATO and because Nearly every country is uh, affected, negative affected by NATO. I think there's a lot of countries which should be part of this week of actions, and hopefully we can get more uh, results in this uh, actions than the last year. So yeah. we also tried this, and I think in, I've told now the most, but before I really close, I will hand over to Ursul, uh, Ulla Glötzer, who can uh, tell us what the Women United Against NATO are, are planning to do in Washington, because we have on the agenda that they will take, uh, will have an own part for, from this uh, network, which was uh, founded for the last uh, anti-NATO activities in Brussels during the summit in Lithuania. So this is, I think, enough for now. <laughs> so I can try to answer questions. And uh, Leo, you can't hear you. You are muted. It's really impressive to have this whole gallery of uh, activities within the womb of the lion. <laughs> Unfortunately, this lion covers so many parts of the world. Uh, and uh, I have just a question that if uh, people everywhere where you are putting actions, uh, uh, most people come there from other parts or if it's the local population who, uh, which is uh, uh, doing the thing. Uh, of course, we try also to get some funds that we can go 
from Europe to Washington, not, and not only in our own town, some activity. So it depends on the movements in general. Normally, we try also to exchange participants and have demonstrations with international participation at the main uh, point, but the most work is done by the uh, local organizations, for, especially if we want to have it in maybe every capital of a NATO country, it would be really great. Then we have to organize things like this with uh, local initiatives and the, in the Eastern Europe countries, we have only few members and I don't see actually uh, how we can manage this, but maybe the Prague Spring 2 network can discuss if uh, it can support um, this work and if it want to be a member of the no to NATO network, because I looked, you are missing, you are not a part of the member. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a formal step, uh, I think, only the uh, question is that uh, one of the activities is this one, which the Prague Spring to network forwarded, hopefully, to get some people also to join the different activities, and we would be happy to pass them on to you. Uh, a... You mentioned uh, Ulla. Uh, He's in the call. Yes. Perhaps uh, she can tell us about the activity with Women for Peace, I think. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I haven't been preparing anything. I have been listening the whole day. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good. Uh, but I have also had four grandchildren running around. I'm, I'm preparing my lessons because we have very few teachers able to jump in in, uh, in my former school. So I'm going to do it next week. I'm 74 and still still trying to do my best. Uh, but OK, um, thanks, Christine. And I want to explain why No to NATO didn't uh, um, arrange any counter summit uh, this uh, year, uh, because Christina, as you can see already then, had problems with her health. Now she is a courageous, strong woman again, and we can now cooperate on the issue. But uh, in the desperation that nothing was uh, to be happening in, in connection with the Vilnius summit in, in, in last July, we uh, formed on a very quick basis, in, in, in three months, about a women's coalition, with a, a common platform was only a declaration against NATO with a women's perspective. And uh, um, we got 250 first women signatories on the declaration. And actually, the intention was to finish the declaration. Uh, by the July meeting in, in Brussels. We went to Brussels because we had nobody to cooperate with in Vilnius. And with no uh, peace movement there to receive us and help us a bit with the uh, logistics, we didn't want to go there. So we went to Brussels and we even brought our declaration to the headquarters. We were 10 women, it was maximum that was accepted, 10 women bringing the, the, the declaration to some puppet on the string, uh, Italian <laughs> NATO uh, diplomat, but we at least brought it. But we then decided that we will continue the signature collecting. It's on the website. You can find it on, on Global Women for Peace, United Against NATO. And men and women, cats and dogs can all sign. And we are at least collecting until Washington summit next year, and maybe further, we don't know, but at least we have to bring it somewhere in Washington, to whom I think we should let our US uh, colleagues decide where we bring it, how to bring it, and so on. Um, with the, the United 
uh, the Global Women for Peace United Against NATO, we always met in the European Parliament. We had a very good meeting with with Claire Daly from Ireland and with Ursula Benirel from Germany, left left wingers, both of them. And of course, when we then finish the declaration, when we, when we stop uh, collecting signatures, then we have a real big job because we have to to distribute it to all the NATO governments, NATO member governments, and all countries connected somehow to NATO. And we have to to send it to the parliaments, uh, and we have to send it, of course, to to, to NATO once again. And I don't know where, but but uh, that's a future uh, task. And we will we are now trying to get a group going at least to Washington and our friends in Washington are preparing uh, women events together with with all the, the local groups in, in the United States. So that was shortly what we have been doing. Thank you. Well, this is an opportunity to say that uh, the women's movements are particularly engaged, of course, with the uh, quantitative differences from country to country. Uh, I just want to recall that uh, a big mobilization is taking place in the United States uh, with uh, Code Pink in the forefront and other organizations, uh, also the old traditional organizations uh, yeah, but participating. I think in more than 20 or 25 cities of uh, the United States. It's really impressive. Uh, on the other hand, uh, 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 things are being prepared for a big mobilization in Rome for the 27th and 28th of October. Uh, the Italians are always the champions when it comes down to the mobilization um, and uh, well there are so many things going on but also for instance in France I've heard uh, in, in in 20 or 22 uh, different cities there were uh, smaller uh, activities uh, with regard to this campaign we are in uh, which is uh, peace in Ukraine and uh, uh, as that's to say it's a process where I think uh, the hope is justified that uh, we are increasing talking about uh, France but not only about France um, I am happy that we Christophe Agiton uh, who is a uh, an old timer, <laughs> also from the social movements and uh, the trade union. Um, what is it called? Uh, uh, the... Solidaire. Solidaire. So... Mm -hmm. A French trade union movement and also a attack uh, from the very beginning uh, and. Uh, uh, he is now part of an initiative which uh, started uh, about, what, one year ago or so mm -hmm. uh, in Florence. Why Florence? Because Florence was the big uh, concentration in 2002 uh, uh, when just before the start of the war in Iraq, uh, and uh, uh, with a, a mobilization, once again, the Italians of a million people uh, to protest against this horrible war. Uh, that's to say there is a history, and on this history, uh, a very interesting new concept is developing again Christoph will talk about that. Thanks a lot, Leo. And uh, I'm very happy to be with all of you. 
uh, and to present a little bit uh, this initiative you, we have to come back a little bit to the difficulties we had to have exchange in Europe among new issues. Of course, in Europe, we have a lot of networks on different topics, eh? peace and women you were just talking about, but we have also the trade unions organized in the European trade unions. We have the Via Campesina, who have a specific uh, network coordination in Europe. We have uh, human rights organization having European bodies. We have uh, the anti-free trade with Seattle to Brussels. And we can add a lot, a lot of examples of network existing in Europe, which is absolutely great and very important for um, our mobilization. But there is now, today, uh, something which is totally transversal, something which is able to cross uh, initiative from different countries and different fields of activities. We got it 22 years ago, as Leo was reminding, when the European Social Forum was created in Florence in 2002. This uh, European Social Forum at the origin, at the beginning, was really dedicated to fight the neoliberalism and the World Bank, the IMF and the G7 in Genoa, for example. That was the, the starting point of this forum. But we were able also to talk about different issues. You remind also the war in Iraq and the European Social Forum was a key player to organize the huge demonstration against the war in Iraq in 2003. But we had also, through the European Social Forum, the capacity to create a sort of uh, a Climate Justice Network, where the name was Climate Justice Now, was able to articulate the social issues and the environmental issue. What I want to say is that this experience was absolutely key for all of us, and I'm very happy to see friends like you, Leo, but also Tord, uh, Judith, and a lot of others who are here in this call who came from this uh, uh, experience and this process of the European Social Forum. But as you know, or I can tell for the people who don't know that, the Social Forum stopped to exist at the end of the 2000, uh, after several meetings, we decided to stop it. After the so European Social Forum, there was another attempt uh, initiated by Belgium Unionist, who was the Alter Summit, was able to have a good initiative in Athens in 2011. But then uh, this Alter Summit, which is still existing, but is declining and have less importance than at the beginning. And we don't have this kind of network. And it's very important both for successes and to be able to understand why those successes exist, for example, in Croatia, in the capital, the, an alternative uh, network was able to win the municipality. Uh, in Poland, we have incredible struggle for, to defend uh, the right of abortion for women. In uh, different countries, we have a lot of very good and positive examples of mobilization in Berlin. The people uh, who were renting house were able to win a referendum to the expropriation of the main uh, uh, and land owner or flat owners. Uh, these kind of things are very useful to be known from one country to the other. But we have also challenges and difficulties. Huh? I gave three very short examples. When the COVID started four years ago, uh, we had a lot of restriction in different countries and we didn't understand what to do as social movement and we were very isolated country by country. The same when the first vaccine arrived, they were dominated by huge multinational and there was a campaign country by country to impose the, the right to the vaccination as a common good for everyone. But again, it was more specific network or country by country. The second example is the war in Ukraine. Of course, uh, in the social movement uh, world, we have strong agreements. For example, in one hand, I think that everyone uh, are knows that uh, the, this war started by the Russian aggression and we defend the sovereignty in Ukraine. In the other hand, we are all criticizing very strongly the NATO and the militarization of Europe, which is imposed by the NATO process. Yeah. And those two things, I think, are the common ground for all of us. But then there are differences. Uh, you have a peace movement we're gathering in Vienna a few months ago, who defend first at all the ceasefire to stop the, the fight, to stop the 
the war and to engage uh, negotiation. And that was very strong in Italy, in Germany, in Austria, uh, and other countries. But I'm only talking about the main country or Spain. But you have other networks who are strong in France or in Poland, for example, who are, of course, against NATO and militarization in Europe, but believe that the most important is to support the right of the Ukrainian to defend themselves and to recover their sovereignty. Uh, but we don't have a place where we can discuss these differences, but also those agreements, and to see what we could do together. That will be very useful, because even if we have a different approach, and it's normal to have time to time different approaches, we have common grounds, and we have the possibility to act together in solidarity Solidarity, for example, with the unions in Ukraine or with the feminist movement in Ukraine, and so on and so on. And the third example, which is the last one, is the cost of living with the inflation, which is coming back in our continent and create a real problem of poverty, of uh, uh, precarity, and uh, what to do about that without talking about the climate change or the environmental change challenges. And we need a place to talk about that. And I will finish by telling that we started to discuss that even a little bit before Florence. We had one year and three months ago, uh, Summer University, European Summer University of Social Movement in Germany, in Mönchengladbach, which, organized, which was organized by Attack Germany, but not only, the unions from Germany were there, Extinction Rebellion from the Climate Justice Movement and other movements were there. And we, we, feel, we felt, all of us, that we needed this kind of new network. And it's, of course, it was in Florence, as Leo was reminding, that we decided to create a network to try to uh, recreate the condition of having a place, a common space, to discuss alternatives to see how to confront our new challenges. And uh, we will uh, probably meet uh, together. It's the project we are in. Uh, in France, uh, Marseille is probably the city where we will be able to do it. Before the European, the European Union uh, election, we will be the 9th of uh, June, meaning that we will try to do it in April to not be in the political fight because it's not our goal as social movement to choose one list or another, but to express what are the main uh, demand and the main uh, uh, claim from the social movement. For example, on migration, when you have uh, all the drama in Mediterranean year after year, uh, about the war in Ukraine and the necessity of peace, about the climate justice, and so on. Uh, it's uh, uh, This conference or this big initiative will take place probably in Marseille, as I was telling you, and also uh, with the idea to invite people from all Europe, not only the European Union people, but also people from Great Britain, people from Switzerland, and of course, people from Balkan and Eastern Europe, and we'll try to have a funding to be able to help the people who cannot come by themselves, and to assure also uh, a conference with translation and all the facility to be able to really exchange among us, European, the big Europe, not only the European Union. That is a little bit the challenge and the project we are in. And if you want to be part of this experience, you can put your mail in your list, in this list, I will take them or give it to Leo Gabriel, which is also very involved in this, uh, who is very involved in this uh, process. And we will add you to the list, of course, to be able to share all the information. Thanks for uh, listening to me. And uh, I'm here to answer to any kind of question you could have. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Christophe, for this uh, wonderful panoramic vision of uh, uh, what is happening in Europe, perhaps adding to this that uh, my personal impression is that there is a big conscious now, uh, which not always was there in among the different movements that it has, that we have to push convergence, convergence of the different movements in order to find out uh, the same thing we try to do here. Uh, what are the bind binding links between environmental and peace and uh, uh, social movements. That has been also uh, a big discussion uh, within the World Social Forum and uh, a whole process uh, uh, was uh, 
started about uh, uh, well the, the discussion started about many years ago even 10 years ago uh, where uh, um, between uh, the people and organizations who said uh, uh, well it's very good to have this as a worldwide space of encounters of different kind of movement and everybody presents his or her uh, action plan or whatever they do. And another part, uh, which I was uh, and I'm still part of it, who said that this, uh, given the situation worldwide of uh, this multiple crisis uh, we are facing, uh, the organizations uh, demand that uh, uh, we could get together to plan future actions uh, uh, with the spirit of this convergence I was just talking about. And, um, in the last year, a little bit more than a year, uh, this discussion became very, very intense and nearly to a point of a sort of division within the World Social Forum uh, when uh, the comrades from Tunis invited us uh, in order to sort out what could there be an agreement uh, in order to form a, a not lose one or the other side. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, meeting, a seminar, one week seminar in Tunis in December last year was successful in doing that. And uh, we agreed on that the World Social Forum in its original format, uh, like it was, will be uh, organized for the next uh a World Social Forum, which is going to be in February, I think 14th to 18th of February, uh, in Nepal, uh, Kathmandu, which is also interesting, by the way, because uh, uh, in a certain way, it is approaching also the Chinese reality, which is so always very controversial and has been uh, discussed. Uh, so uh, uh, the uh, Nepalese organizing committee uh, made very good uh, preparations in, in that sense. But at the same time, a process was triggered off uh, of an as assembly like it is now called uh, um, assembly for struggles and resistances of the World Social Forum, which is a format which should have a decision-making power among all the organizations who join them, whether they have been part of the World Social Forum or not. And uh, 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 this assembly process is on its way slowly but consistently and uh, we are planning uh, uh, to uh, work on a regional level uh, like this one which is the, the central and eastern european region but uh, there is also the mesoamerican region who does also by the way uh, things today in demonstration and the center of and then and uh, tra tra meet meeting at the, one of the trade union centrals in Mexico City so uh, uh, to uh, bind these things together and uh, uh, on a regional level and then hopefully we can uh, have a big assembly a worldwide assembly uh, in Kathmandu at the next World Social Forum. That's what I wanted to inform 
from my side, since I am one of the uh, uh, members of the International Council since its very beginning of the World Social Forum, and also uh, if you have some questions, please go ahead. Now, I don't know whether perhaps uh, about the uh, talking about uh, assembly and so on, about uh, the other, uh, Matthias, I think, has been into, uh, into this initiative uh, uh, which developed since about two or three years ago uh, and where the, uh, there was the last I recall a big meeting in Caracas. Uh, uh, do you want to uh, tell us what's the present situation? What, what do you know about it, Matthias? No, uh, I have no no information about that. What I was uh, what I was planning and uh, and trying to prepare is a is a Central European Social Forum in either in Budapest or in Prague, and uh, we are uh, now in a preparatory process for organizing it to see how we can find uh, the uh, funders for this meeting and how we can uh, organize it. Because we have uh, a possibility to, to get uh, a place from trade union, from trade unions or from, uh, from uh, uh, civil society like uh, SICRA, uh, SPARK uh, movement and uh, we had in mind in in November, but it it, it needs uh, still uh, to 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 think it over with the others how we can organize it. Great, great, good to hear that. Uh, uh, wonderful. So we have some perspective and some future. Now uh, I want to ask everybody if you know about specific actions in the future uh, people who are here might be interested in in joining uh, and uh, Tord uh, raised his hand thank you uh, when it comes to this international people's assembly which was developed some years ago uh, they are very much expanding in in the global south uh, there is a tendency that one was thinking that there is more need for a more clear anti-capitalist uh, network, more radical demands, making decisions, etc. Et uh, and one of the main organizations in this has been Movimento Sem Terra, the landless movement in Brazil, which uh, many of you probably know is the biggest sort of mass movement in Latin America organizing landless, but in general also land reform and so on with some two million members. Uh, this has been part of this uh, process in the World Social Forum where they already in 2009 saw that was too little action happening inside the World Social Forum. They were there, but they organized more things outside than inside and has then since uh, developed in that direction. Uh, but anyway, it, this is a sign of the need for linking the issues, uh, which is sort of uh, the most important thing here is this uh, political uh, thing. Uh, <clears throat> secondly, uh, there is this level of uh, uh, tendency that the environmental movement never really committed themselves to, to, to the social forum. Uh, this has been clear in many uh, times. There has been more temporary occasions. One of the reasons being that uh, uh, the environment and climate movement have their own processes. Uh, it was not necessary and sometimes more effective uh, than, than what happens in, 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 in the social forum space. Uh, so there has been great problems in getting uh, a broad range of... of, of uh, uh, 
the environmental movement involved in the social forum process. And uh, the Via Campesina was uh, part of it, but never really got integrated and has done a little bit being less integrated and some have left in different directions. Uh, yet we see now a tendency of convergence. Uh, it was very possible to 21 to uh, to engage via Campesina in all kinds of environmental and climate movement. And we saw this today as well, that there are some very interesting uh, tendencies uh, in, in, the, in, in the climate movement. And uh, hopefully also the food movement, which is equally important, this is seldom understood. But uh, for many, the food issue is as, as important as the climate issue. And this is related to biological diversity, etc. Uh, one of the strongest country in this regard in the food sovereignty movement is actually Romania, where the European meeting was held in, uh, well, was it 2016 or something like that? So uh, this is uh, things moving on. And as we already heard from Dorothy <coughs> Guerrero, uh, for the climate movement, the upcoming World Bank meeting next week is very essential. And it has become a sort of main focus for the climate movement because it will be easier to go to Marrakesh than to, to, uh, than to this uh, uh, Arabian Peninsula, where, where the next COP will take place. Uh, so uh, what we can see is a growing concern trying to get things together. But at the same time, for instance, some of the climate uh, justice activists, the global level, sees it uh, if they want to go to Nepal, they want to have an outcome. Uh, and uh, this very broad, broad uh, specter of uh, everything uh, is not really um, uh, in their interest, as one are used to get much more out of if you spend something to go to an international meeting, you are used to come back with some very concrete program. Uh, now, actually, it is as, uh, as, as uh, Leo Gabriel pointed out, there is uh, this decision from Tunis. It is possible to start permanent assembly processes. And there is one specifically where many in the Prague Spring 2 has been active uh, towards Nepal. And uh, Pierre George, who is here present as well, have been doing a very much work in terms of uh, seeing to that there is uh, internet possibilities. And uh, in my uh, impression is it that the movements not yet have understood the great new possibilities, especially of the hybrid. Uh, what we see in Sweden, I guess, everywhere else is that, yes, we have a lot of Zoom meetings like this, etc., but it never really works if we don't uh, also meet in uh, person to person. Uh, if we don't go out in the streets and do local action, there is no use. Actually, this social media thing can be a, uh, splitting the movements in very many sort of uh, millions of different small things and pushing the button, but it was on that we had to get the physical thing. That's why Nepal is important. But at the same time, we have this possibility with the with, with, uh, uh, with the internet connections. Uh, what we see here is a very big problem uh, for Central and Eastern Europe. There's probably not a single person who have the resources to go to Nepal and certainly not Southern Caucasus, et cetera, et cetera. So how to connect this will be interesting, but I, I think it would be useful to hear from Pierre George if he has things to uh, address in this concept, especially as I understood Pierre that actually starting a global process towards uh, Nepal, trying to get some kind of common uh, message, that would not be at all a stupid thing to do. Yeah, you want to comment on that? Uh, <clears throat> Hello. Uh, just to say that the, the hybrid concept is um, 
is complex uh, because there there are many different possibilities. I think so far the Nepali have understood that uh, uh, they consider that they will provide some good internet and then many people will be have a delegation in Nepal can organize an activity and make it hybrid. So that's, I think, where they have come. Uh, the next possibility is uh, having an organization that it's not present in Nepal that it would be making activities online, not overlapping with the hours of Nepal. So the idea is whenever, for, for instance, this works with um, Latin America, which is very much apart from Nepal. So they can make uh, meetings online while Nepal sleeps, because basically this is 12 hours difference practically. So this is, so you, you can have this idea of perimeters of activities. The first perimeter is the activities that are held physically in Kathmandu, with inside them the perimeter of activity that are hybridized by their own organizers. And so people from the rest of the world can participate online, hopefully more or less interactively, depending the experience of the organizations to make hybrid uh, meetings. That's perimeter two. Then you have perimeter three, which is having online activities on the days of the forum, but not, uh, not overlapping uh, Kathmandu time. And this might interest many international networks or people that have uh, time difference problem or are not in Kathmandu at all. So this perimeter three on the days of the event, and this is not yet clear. Uh, I think what there is just a website called Join WS Forum where you can make uh, these activities visible. And so you have an idea. of kind of community of the WSF space and process that's maintained, but next to Kathmandu process. And of course, perimeter four is the activities that are like this one here, would can be made visible. I, I, it would be good that you make it visible in the joint forum website uh, the, for, for people from the caravan of the, in, in West Africa, they are doing it. They are making their steps of the caravan as activities in this site. So this is the before and after. So hybrid online is a is a wide notion. At the moment, the Nepali people are, have gone to uh, hybridizing on in-person meetings in Kathmandu. That's where they have gone so far. But the let's see in the coming months uh, if they... Uh, how how the coexistence of the purely online or local outside Nepal and the Nepal-based activities can coexist and may be made uh, mutually visible. I hope this is answering a question by Todd more or less. Leo, you are muted. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Pierre. Uh, we have still some minutes. Uh, if there are some questions about this part, uh, in the maybe in, yes. In the future, uh, Christine. Uh, no, I, I I have shared in the chat and in uh, I have shared in the chat an invitation to come to a WhatsApp group about West Eastern Europe. There is a uh, 16 people in that group, and I think more people today are there, and they could be interested to join. It's a non-committing group. It's just uh, why and how participate in WSF. So it's information and questions. So it's a okay. Thank you. Good place to be to receive information. So I I just uh, put the, the the invitation link again in the chat. Thank you. Christina? Yeah, as um, answer to uh, your proposal with a WhatsApp group, it's a pity for me, but I will not go 
to Facebook and WhatsApp because this disturbs all our uh, connections and have a lot of influence to our society and bad influences. Therefore, try something like, like Signal or others which are not belonging to Facebook and WhatsApp. But this wasn't my uh, raise hand. I forgot something to mention that all the movements where no tornado is involved are now able to make a hybrid uh, events. Look at the Wien conference for Ukraine. It was a hybrid uh, event. We have here local events in Germany as hybrid. Uh, Brussels was hybrid. And also uh, New York, uh, Washington is planned as hybrid events because we need also the personal meetings and not only some Zoom uh, or other uh, tools for uh, meetings. Okay, Todd. Yes, uh, and we will uh, see this very clearly in Sweden where we have a, a dramatic change in relation to the peace movement. 200 years of peace policy have been put in, uh, in the dustbin and a country which went in the total other direction 100 years ago, opposing war with Norway when the right wing wanted to have this, when the, uh, Norway wanted to split, all the mass movement went out into the streets and went to their their houses singing the Norwegian national hymn and the trade union said there will be no transport of weapons to the border and you know 10 years afterwards everyone was applauding going out into into the war this country who has been having some of these kind of historic uh, moments is now going towards militarization and it's completely ad adopting to NATO in terms of uh, uh, throwing out Kurds in terms of uh, labeling women for peace as a threat uh, to society, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And what we see then is that meeting is very important physically. And we have this uh, network, People in Peace, started by the transition movement, the environmental movement, actually, but uh, with many joined from the peace movement. And when we meet up in the mountains to counter the more official uh, security policy meeting, those who go to, goes to these meetings, they get very happy, but those who stay on social media, they get depressed because this all this media is filled with this, uh, with this uh, constant propaganda that the only solution to everything is more weapons. So uh, we have to, uh, of course, need the, the hybrid to reach out to wider, but we have to meet as well. And there is one point which was standing in the list of groups that we want to approach, and it's the transition moment, uh, movement. I think it's uh, important to understand. I think this was a, we had enormous mobilization 20 years ago with the so-called global justice movement. Uh, it was, had different names but it missed this local uh, connection. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, I think, the very new aspect, which was brought very much to many big movements, came very much with the COVID crisis, starting to understand we have to look at the local level. We have to look at mutual support. And more or less all, all the mass movement, Via Campesina, Friends of the Earth, uh, International Peace Bureau, etc., started to include that aspect. And one of the very important movements here is uh, Global Tapestry of Alternatives and the network they've been building in relation also to the World Social Forum, Adelante. And we have connections with them, and they are actually the strongest force in our peace movement in, in Sweden. They are not afraid to be stand Putinist because they are used to say we are working with everyone who wants positive change. And uh, that is uh, another sort of alliance which is important in, 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 in this building uh, of uh, the future.
Uh, oh, Leo. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, now we have a sort of a complete picture of uh, uh, the variety of activities which are going on. Uh, perhaps we can get together afterwards uh, in order to put that uh, in a written form, uh, what has been said from the different organizations and groups and networks and so on, uh, so that we can uh, at least search for our participation in all of this. Well, uh, uh, since it is already the time to finish, uh, I want to thank you all for your patience uh, because it's in 10.30. Uh, uh, it was quite some time. And my impression, I'm not going to make a resume, which is uh, impossible, um, but my impression is that we uh, get, at least my feeling was to get insights in a more profound structure than if you just say we have to get together with social movements or environment and so on. Uh, there was a kind of a depth also in the analysis of the Eastern European situations in Romania and uh, Armenia and uh, uh, Hungary and whatever. And, uh, uh, and uh, this gives us a feeling that there is a lot to do. Uh, and uh, uh, I think a lot is being done. Uh, and if the uh, task of this webinar has been to uh, a little bit bind certain elements together to have a, a, a common vision, I think this was very much fulfilled thanks to the speakers who have presented uh, the different countries. Thank you very much. And... Uh, hope to see you again. Thor. And I just add some few things. Uh, you see the symbol network at Folk of Freer. That's the network people and peace. That's the ones who have helped us to arrange this Zoom. Uh, they will put uh, this uh, webinar on YouTube and we will oh. make it av available. And uh, finally, in the list of, of things coming up, is one of a uh, global campaign on military spending, which is uh, International Peace Bureau is doing with a lot of other movements, and that is linking very much with the main topic here, unilateral disarmament for a socio-ecological transition. And I think this way of linking social peace and environmental issue is a great step forward. And this was a really a good way we were able to do this. And really, thanks everyone, participants and speakers and so on. So thank you very much. Bye bye. Bye bye. See, see you thank on you the road. For the invitation. See you on the road. Bye bye. Bye bye.